What's up everyone? Welcome to Lord Expectations, the extremely well lit YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. It's a little chilly today and I am working on another diesel heater video. I'm currently doing a test, a fuel consumption test where I have the heater set at level five. So you can expect to see that coming out soon on this channel. But that's not the subject of today's video. The subject of today's video is about my CNC milling machine conversion. And this video is specifically about building the table or the bench to actually hold the machine. If you haven't already seen the first video in this series, I would recommend going and checking that out just to get up to speed. It was basically an unboxing and talking about some of the features and uh, specifications of the mill that I chose. In the description below, not only will you find my Patreon and my Teespring, but at the top of the description, I am going to add the cost of this project as of the recording date. I'll try to keep that up to date, and if I miss one, you guys let me know, and I will do my best to update it. Now, let's get into the video. I ordered the controls for it, and they are sitting behind me in a box right here, or two boxes and I am still waiting for the ball screws. Uh, I just ordered the metal. I've designed a stand and a chip tray or a chip pan in Fusion 360 and I plan to have somebody uh, bend up that metal for me because there's no way that I'm gonna get that right. So what I'm gonna do today, I just purchased uh, $440 worth of steel. This is one and a half by one and a half square tubing uh, with a, I believe, 0.65 or 0.63 wall, so regular uh, square tubing. And I'm going to make a stand for the mill. I'm gonna try to do a fairly nice job on this and make sure I get it welded up not only nice and square, but not have a bunch of jagged corners. So I'm gonna take my time and try to make sure that I sand down my welds and stuff like that. What I'm doing here is notching out the ends of the tubing so that I have a little flap left over. That little flap will be used to cover up the ends of the tubes on the table so that the corners don't have any openings.
for some reason, my other welding helmet, my new welding helmet, is very delayed on switching. And I keep getting blinded. Not ideal. The block is simply so I don't burn all of the paint off of my floor. I've already got a pretty good start on that. I like to avoid burning it all away. That went really well. I'm hardly even embarrassed about it. all that work and here's what I have so far I know it doesn't look like much but it went together quite well I am very pleased with the way it turned out I have to think very carefully about what I want to do next I'm gonna make some cross beams for the uh, lathe no nope, the mill to sit on they're gonna be offset to one side I am going to be hopefully leaving enough room on one side for the tool cabinet and then on the other side I will have space for the flood coolant system. There will be a drawer to catch the chips and then below the drawer will be a sump basically a catch pan for the uh, lubrication fluid for the mill and also the pump and some other stuff. My cat is screaming. Typical. Hi. When releasing YouTube videos, there's a fine line between not giving enough information and having people frustrated or discouraged and giving too much information and not having any engagement in the comment section whatsoever. So I'm gonna tell you guys the basic dimensions of this table. I might have to get Quasar somewhere through this. He likes to pretend that he wants down so he can get my attention, but then when I, <laughs> then I come over and he swats out. <coughs> I come over and he's just swatting at me. Come on. Come on. Quasar. 
Hi. Oh, ow. You got me, buddy. Come on, come on down. Come on down. Come on. You want it down. Okay, so he doesn't want down for now. The top of the table or the top of the frame, whatever you want to call it, is three feet deep by six feet long or six feet wide. And the overall height is yet to be determined because I'm going to be changing that around. Again, you will see that in the next video. I don't know if these legs are actually straight or parallel or perpendicular or whatever you want to call them, but uh, I welded them up, I tacked them up and purposely made the leg so that it was uh, canted out slightly. I checked the measurement across these two legs before welding the inside joint and it was 36 and a quarter and it just came in Oh, it came out, it's about a 16th under 36 now. So yeah, it came in a little over a quarter of an inch. It is now the following morning and I've finished welding all the legs on. You guys would have seen me weld on the four outer legs. I decided to change the design slightly and offset this one leg 15 inches over, which puts it closer to the center but also allows me to support the mill a little bit more on the left and on the right. So there's going to be beams coming across here, or this tubing is going to come across. One's going to come across here, and then 15 inches over, there is going to be another one that comes across, and that's because the base of the mill is 15 inches across. So what this is going to do is allow me to support the left hand side of the mill with one leg and the right hand side of the mill with the other leg and gives me a nice large opening here so this is i believe 45.5 inches between here and there and then 22 inches between the inside of that and the inside of that i don't want to get a reputation for being too deep but if something falls in your shop and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? That is 80 and a half inch. Eighty and a half. <laughs> I couldn't make that up. That is flute, folks. As you guys can see, I've been using a flap disc 
to clean up all of my welds. But unlike most of the time, it's not because my welds are absolute crap and I'm trying to hide something. As you can see, or maybe you can't see, but that is actually a pretty good weld. They're actually turning out quite nice. Not the hardest thing ever to weld. Sorry I can't get a better shot. I got this stupid mill stuck in the road. But this is what I was talking about. We've got one leg supporting this side and the other leg supporting this side. So these are 15 inches apart. The mill is going to sit right here. And the reason why it's sitting offset is because it's going to have a servo motor on one side. I need this much space in order to have enough table travel. It's going to be a pretty tight fit, but I've calculated that it's going to be within an inch or so. Double check. This one is nine and a half exactly. That one's a little bit high, so it was great. Alright, there we go. I think a lot of what determines how good or bad my weld is, is how much smoke I have to breathe in. I start holding my breath, <laughs> trying not to breathe in the smoke, and that makes it hard to weld. actually feel the stand shifting as the uh, weld cools off and the legs move. I've now done a whole bunch more cutting and welding and this is where we're at. I've taken care of something that I know a bunch of you were probably screaming at your screens about and that is adding two more legs so that the mill is supported in all four corners. You guys didn't really think I was going to leave it like that, did you? In an upcoming video we will talk a little bit more about some of the other modifications that I've done to this as well as go into a little bit more detail. As this project progresses, I will go into more detail about each specific thing. What do you mean? Why are you following me around like a lost puppy? You're... 
You need to go in the attic. Is that what you want? Are you trying to get into the attic? Is that what you want? Yeah, you want in the attic. Unfortunately, that is all the time that I have in this video. The good news is that I do have the next video in this series already edited and exported. And part of the reason is that I accidentally edited the next video in this series before this one. Part of the reason for that is the next video is a Viver sponsored video or a Viver affiliated video. So uh, when you guys see that come around, I would appreciate you clicking on the link. Even if you're not interested in the product, it uh, shows Viver that people who watch my videos go and check out their website. So that video will be released fairly soon. Viver is having a Black Friday sale and I'm making a few videos for that. So you guys can expect to see plenty of Viver videos over the next uh, week and a half or so. That is gonna do it for this one. If you guys wanna support me on Patreon, there are links in the description below, as well as links to my Teespring and my other YouTube channel. I've gotta go get Quasar out of the attic. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Do you really want down this time, or you just want to swap me? Whoa! <laughs> uh, cats. Cats are ridiculous creatures. <laughs>